In this series of videos, I'm going to look at how to process um, high dynamic range images of interiors uh, that look realistic. Now there's a few different steps involved in this process and it's probably a little different than most HDR work that people do because we're not technically going to do HDR. We're going to do something called exposure fusion which is going to give us more realistic results and we're also going to do some perspective correction with the new adaptive wide angle feature inside of Photoshop CS6. So let's get started. I'm here in Lightroom and I've got a bracket of images. Now when I shot it, I shot a whole bunch of images together. Uh, I wanted to make sure it wasn't just a standard three shot bracket that you might use for HDR. What I want to do is I want to make sure that the correct exposure, if I was pointing out the window, I've got that for the darkest exposure, provided it's daytime and the window's brighter. And I also want to go straight through to the brightest being where my histogram here has nothing in the bottom sort of third or at least quarter, uh, because this area of the histogram, the darkest stop or two, it generally doesn't have a lot of detail to it, so it's prone to get a lot of noise. So by shooting really bright exposures at the end, it allows me to uh, have less noise in the uh, shadows of my overall picture. So I shot these in two stop increments, and so there's six shots. I'm gonna go to one, say, in the middle, and I'm gonna do some adjustments to them. So here in Lightroom, I'm gonna go to my develop module. I'm gonna go to my basic panel, and I want to set my white balance. So I'm just going to grab this, and this is white right here, so I'm going to click on that, and that's going to set that as white. Now I want to make sure all my tonal controls are set to zero. I'm going to close that, go into tone curve. I want to make sure that's set flat. On my split toning, I don't care. The detail panel, this uh, default sharpening is okay. If you come down to noise reduction on the luminance, I'm gonna add just a little bit. Even though I shot this at ISO 100 and the exposure fusion process doesn't create as much noise as traditional tone mapping does, just adding a little gives me a bit of a safety net. So I'm gonna add that. Um, and then I'm gonna come up to lens correction. And I wanna turn on automatic lens correction. And if your lens doesn't automatically appear, sometimes you can just choose, this lens never actually automatically appears in, in the list here. So click it on. If you have to, select the make and model of your lens if there are lens profiles available for it. Come over to color and click on the remove chromatic aberration checkbox. Now this is something that's new in Lightroom 4.1. So if you're using a previous version, you may have different controls. And if you're using Lightroom 2 or earlier, there's no lens correction. Uh, my on my effects, I want this set to zero. And I could monkey with the camera calibration, but in this case, the one that I've that default of Adobe Standard is actually the best one for this. So I'm going to leave that there. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I apply this whole setting, these settings, sorry, across the entire bracket. So I'm going to go back to my library, and I'm going to choose the grid view. And with that one selected, I'm also going to select these ones. I can just hold my command button and select them. You'll notice this is the brightest one and that means it's the most selected. So if I choose to, I'm just going to hit shift command S or shift control S and that's going to bring up my synchronizing settings dialog. And I want to make sure I synchronize everything because I basically want everything in this to be identical. And I'm just going to choose the synchronize. And that's going to apply all those settings that I've applied in that one image across the entire bracket. Now, because I've got Photomatic's uh, plug-in here, I can just right-click on these and choose Export, and I'm going to choose Photomatic's Pro from the list. Now, it gives me the pre-processing options here. Do I want to align the images? Yes. I shot these on a tripod, and you're, you're going to need to shoot them on a tripod because you're going to have some very long exposures. Um, but there's not much movement because it was just, you know, if the thing got jostled a little as I changed the settings. Um, so I'm not really worried about which of these two settings I'm using. Reducing ghosting artifacts, there was nothing moving in this, so that's just going to take extra time and not accomplish anything. Reducing noise, I've done it here in Lightroom. Reduce chromatic aberrations, I've done in Lightroom, but eh, I'll try it again just in case it missed some. And then I would choose export. Now in this case, like a cooking show, I've already done this, so I'm just going to flip over here to Photomatics. Now it brings up the uh, thing here and it's got a whole bunch of uh, presets that it shows you. I'm just going to choose to fit here. So you'll notice most people go to this option here that's called tone mapping and this is kind of roughly what they would get as their starting place. 
I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to Exposure Fusion. And you'll notice if I just hit the default key, this is pretty much the default. Um, I've got my strength and blending point set to zero. If I'm finding that my highlights are clipping out a bit, I might try and move the blending point. But when I do so, I have to watch because the, sometimes the shadows will start to look really flat if I do that. In this case, I think that the, uh, the standard default setting was pretty good. The local contrast, this is new in this version of Photomatix. I think it's 4.2. Let me just double check here. This is 4.2. And this is one of the things that it's been most lacking all along, and so you had to add this in Photoshop later, but it's better to see this as you're actually processing it. So white clip and black clip, well, I don't really need to do anything. I've still got some nice black shadows. Just because I can see into the darkest shadows doesn't mean I really want to. So I think this is looking pretty good, and I'm just going to hit the process button, and it's going to go ahead and apply those settings. Now, it's going to take a bit of time, I guess, here. So uh, while it does that, I'm just going to talk about the next step. I'm going to take this into Photoshop, and it's going to be Photoshop CS6 because Photoshop CS6 added the adaptive wide-angle feature, which is really great if you're shooting uh, real estate photography because it allows you basically to have a perspective-corrected lens in a way that you couldn't do just with standard lens correction. So Photomatix is going to bring this up, and, it, and uh, I'm just going to hit Done and uh, save this, and I'm going to call this Sitting Room. I'll just save it onto my desktop. And I'm going to close that down. Now I'm going to go into Photoshop, 